Hey everybody, John here and welcome to the video how to make a kick drum in Citrus. So before we dive into this and start making the patch, um, there's a couple things that we should really think about before we start making a kick. And those are what exactly is a kick drum? So we know that there's a low end function to it, which is going to be the fundamental frequency, which I have here on the left hand side, and a little bit of pitch glide once the uh, once the beater hits the kick drum. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. And the next part is going to be the high frequency harmonic content. And there's going to be multiple layers of that as well. So what is that? That is when the beater hits the head of the kick drum. Now that might sound like, okay, obviously a beater hits a kick drum, but we don't really think about it in terms of there's high, high frequency harmonic content in a low end sound. So we're going to go over that as well. And then the last but not least is going to be some added EQ compression and some effects, probably some maybe distortion to kind of add in a little bit more harmonics in there if need be. The goal of this video isn't necessarily to show you this exact kick drum I have here, but it's more so to show you what a kick drum is made of and how to make that in a synth, whether it's citrus, whether it's something else. So it's kind of the building blocks that you can first start off with. And then after that, you can kind of personalize it or change it or do some wacky stuff with it. So with that in mind, let's get started. I have this session here and I added about six bars here just to kind of put the kick drum in context because a kick drum alone you can't really get that much out of it so we'll listen to it alone and then we'll listen to it within the context of the song as well so first of all here's the kick drum itself and then here's the kick drum within this context here which is just a couple presets and the dubstep fpc preset with some uh, hats and snares on it So it's basically a kick drum. So before we start making it, let's go over this kick drum patch and kind of talk a little bit about it and, uh, and kind of demystify a little bit here. So first of all, I generally want to put on high, a uh, high EQ or high Q, whatever, high, high quality, Jesus Christ, envelopes on the uh, drafts, what we're listening to, so we can have a more accurate representation of what we're doing with our envelopes. The first operator is basically going to be this. Let's turn these ones off here. Let's go to pattern. So it's basically just going to be that, and that's going to be the fundamental frequency. And then on this, we also have pitch. So we can tell that when this is first hit, it's going to hit a higher pitch, and then it's going to go down here, and it's going to rest here on our fundamental frequency, which I chose 47 for this example. And then next up, let's turn this one off and turn the next one on. So this operator is basically acting as a representation of the beater hitting the head of the kick drum. And I also added another one for the third one. It's a little bit quieter and a little bit lower on the frequency scales. We can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it's slightly here in the blue. And then here's the, uh, the second one. So this is going to be the main noise oscillator. And then those two in uh, tandem. And then add it in with the fundamental. Sounds like a kick drum. So basically what's happening here is operator two is a noise oscillator and it's getting routed to filter number one, which is right here. And I have a low pass on it. And then I just kind of dial in the cutoff frequency as well. And then same thing for the third one. Uh, it's a noise oscillator and it's going through another filter with a cutoff frequency at a different spot. And they all have their own respective envelopes in the volume here and in the volume here. The third one's a little bit longer than the second one. It's kind of nice to make them a little bit different to kind of add a little bit more variation to it. So let's add in a new citrus patch here. And where are you? Here you are. So let's go here and then let's immediately default this to normal. And what kind of helps as well is since we have this pattern here, let's open this up and kind of just have a couple in here like that, just so we don't have to uh, keep pressing a key every single time, because that will get monotonous at some point. So with this default patch here, what we're gonna do is make this a little bit bigger because we're gonna need to focus on some envelopes. So the first things first is going to be the fundamental frequency. So we have to decide how low our kick drum is going to sound. And you can kind of change this according to the key of your song, which is really cool in synthesis. So let's go to the first operator, and as before, let's turn on the HQ envelope. Got it right that time. And then on this ratio where it says 2, let's bring that to 0. And then here, let's dial it into 47 like we had for the last one. There's 4 and then 7. So now, we just kind of have like a low-end pulse of a sine wave. 
Now, what we want to do is we want to contour the sound to make it sound like how a kick drum would sound. So let's turn on our envelope and let's drag this point all the way to the left and then just drag this point here all the way down here and kind of keep this one close as well. So it's a little too long. Oh, we're on pitch. Hold on, let's turn this one off here. Volume, here we go. Turn this on, go all the way to the left and bring this one down here. And let's turn the magnet up so we can get a little bit more. And this is where you really want to spend your time in to kind of get this right, because these envelopes are going to make or break your whole thing. So that sounded de de decently right for now, and we can move on to pitch. So let's delete this here. And then let's make a first dot here with our pencil off and our magnet on. Let's bring this all the way up to the top. And then we want to maybe make another point here and then drag this guy up. And we can even see it here on the uh, spectrum analyzer how it kind of pitches down. So with this envelope off and then with it on. And this is another spot too where you really kind of want to hone this in. It's kind of exaggerated here. So maybe something kind of like that. So that's going to be our first stop. Next up, we're going to go to operator two. Let's pause that for a second. Let's bring up the noise oscillator all the way up. And let's turn this off for now. Let's send this to the filter one and then all the way output here. So we're just going to hear noise. So what we want to do is turn this on for our volume and then bring this all the way to the left, bring all this down here. So we can kind of hear that sound as well to kind of hone in the time. Let's take our magnet off. And generally the beater's gonna be a much quicker because it's a really quick attack. And when we're kind of happy with that type of envelope, let's hop into the filter and then hone in the type of sound. So we can play with this cutoff frequency. We're just using a low pass on one. And let's put HQ on as well. So that might be kind of okay right around here. And then let, now let's turn on our fundamental. So it's getting pretty close here. Now, let's do the same thing. Let's turn on uh, filter one, volume. Let's uh, go back to this filter and let's turn on global. And then do we do it for this one? Let's turn on global as well. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing that we did for operator two, for operator number three, but slightly different. So operator three, let's send this to filter number two, and then let's send this out the output and let's turn these off for now. So that's just a sine wave at this point, and let's bring up a noise oscillator. Let's turn this envelope on and do kind of the same thing. And then now we're gonna hop into filter number two and kind of dial in that sound as well. So as remembered before, this is what the first noise oscillator sounded like. It's a little higher end. And this one's going to be a little bit lower. Because we want to have somewhat variation in the noise. So maybe something like this, and then let's hop back in here and kind of maybe make this a little quicker. Something kind of like that. So now we want to mix them all together. So here's our fundamental. Here's the first noise. And then we have the third right here. So this is basically the initial building block, your fundamental and then some noise operators right here. Now next up, what we kind of want to do as well is add some EQ to kind of take out some of the low end stuff that gets automatically put in there, I guess I should say. So let's put this over here to the side and let's grab a fruity EQ2. And let's kind of bring this up a little bit here. So we can see here's the pitch that's happening like normal, but let's get this first one, let's go to type and let's do a high pass and kind of bring this down. I like to scroll on my mouse wheel, uh, it's a kind of handy too, so it's not such a sloped curve, it's a little bit steeper. And let's kind of bring it maybe a little bit down here to kind of cut off that low end as well. And then there's gonna be some mud in there, so let's generally take maybe number three and number two doesn't really matter, kind of find where that mud is. Maybe somewhere right around here. Let's bring this down. And then we also want to get the high frequency back in there. 
so we can kind of boost this up here a little bit. And get a little bit of that down as well. All right, so now what we can do is let's kind of hear this in context. So let's turn this guy off and then let's paint this all the way through and see how this one sounds in this case. So with that, I can already tell that I might like a little bit more low end for this. It sounds like there's too much of that noise. So we can go in here and bring these down a little bit as well and have more of that, uh, that fundamental there. Now you can uh, compress this a little bit if you want, but it already basically sounds compressed as well. So that's generally up to you if you want to do that. Another trick I like to do as well, and I set it up for this as well, is I have a distortion channel right here with a little bit of fruity overdrive on 100 and the preamp maybe around a quarter of the way up. And you kind of sneak this in just a little bit. It adds a little bit more harmonic content to it. So we'll select our kick here, our new one here, and then we will oops, select our kick and then drag up a little of this. So if you see it off and then just a little bit makes a big difference. And that's basically the fundamentals of it. Um, a couple things to think about is here on your fundamental frequency, like I mentioned before, you can kind of mess around with this and change the pitch of your kick drum to kind of do to uh, match the key of your song a little bit. Your range really is probably going to be maybe 42 at the very lowest to maybe 55 at the very top. So kind of try to stay within that range. And even those extremes are kind of pushing it. So let's take a listen to see how those sound. So this one's kind of okay. And that's really low end. It sounds good, but the problem is, is uh, you might not be able to hear it on a lot of speakers because that's such a low end as well. And then up here kind of sounds, sounds a little too high pitched for my taste, but definitely it's a subjective thing. So it's up to you. I would take anywhere personally from maybe 46 to never really above 51, probably. And then with a the pitch glide as well too, here on the EQ, you can kind of hone in a little bit more. making kick drums sometimes you get a lot of that extra mud down here as well between like maybe 100 and 160 ish or so 100 200 maybe even so this is with an eq and without it so you can tell there's a lot more mud in there so you, you kind of generally want to clean it up a little bit So that's basically the whole fundamental of the kick drum. From here, you can kind of customize it a little bit more how you want to. There's certain little tricks, for example, where if we have, uh, let's bring up our patch again. So if we have in our filter for the fundamental, we can kind of use a different type of waveform that has more harmonic content. So maybe like a, a triangle wave or a square wave or something like that and send that through, through a filter and then crank up the resonance and kind of open and close the resonance with automation to kind of make it have that, uh, that acid bass kind of sound. There's that possibility. I might make a video talking about that type of kick drum, but this video is essentially just the fundamentals of it and learning what a kick drum is and kind of the tar target things to hone in on when you're making one. So I hope this video was helpful. If there's any questions you guys have, please let me know and I will try my best to respond and have a good day.